Hey guys, and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to discuss my favorite lenses when it comes to street photography for Sony cameras. And I will mainly be focusing on the Sony full frame cameras uh, today. So if you are interested in capturing vibrant and dynamic street life photography, then you definitely don't want to miss this one. Let's get on with it. So before we get into the nitty gritty with the specific lenses, I think it is really good to establish what I think is a good street photography lens. So I think that street photography requires some sort of agility and lightweight and easy to handle scenario because you are moving around and you don't want to carry things that are too heavy where your hands get tired or you have to bring a huge bag to, to carry your equipment. So this is a thing that I look for when I am talking about lenses for street photography. So the lenses I'm going to talk about from now are just randomly selected. It's not that I have a most favorite one. So this is not like a uh, you should buy this first lens. These are just my uh, five favorite lenses. The first lens is what I am shooting on right now. This is the uh, Sony 35mm 1.8 I really think this is a perfect lens for street photography because it is uh, relatively small and lightweight. It has a really nice focal length with the 35 millimeters where you almost get like the nifty 50 length, but you also get a little bit more wider uh, look. And I just found this to be a really attractive focal length when you shoot people and urban scenery. It's also very affordable, which makes it a perfect lens for beginners. But also if you're looking for to buy a new lens, I would highly recommend this. It is definitely one of my uh, favorite lenses. With a wide aperture of 1.8, it definitely delivers on the part of being able to let a lot of light in with an excellent performance in low light and a really beautiful bokeh if you ask me. And also this lens has some decent uh, capabilities of uh, going close to subjects. It has a minimum distance of uh, 0.22, which is uh, really nice uh, for a lens that is not a macro lens. So I highly recommend this lens. So the next lens is the Sony 24 1.4. And I do not personally own this lens. I have tried it out a couple of times where I've uh, lent it. And it's a really fantastic lens. And it's definitely, if not the best uh, 24 millimeter lens out there, it's at least top three, but I still think it's the best. It's a fantastic, really, really high level lens that captures the 24 millimeter wider view. Really nice. The downside of this lens is that it's a bigger and a heavier lens than some of the other lenses that I'm going to talk about today, but I still think it's okay to take with you because it's still just a 24 millimeter lens and not a zoom lens in the size that is. And of course the 1.4 aperture is a really high level of performance when it comes to letting light in and it also gives you really crisp bokeh if you stop it down. The wider focal length with the 24 millimeter offers you the wider focal length with the 24 millimeter offers you the ability to capture more of your scenery. So it makes a great focal length for these more like landscape -y urban street photos. One of the downsides about this lens is also that it is uh, quite expensive. This is not a beginner lens. An alternative to this lens could be the uh, Samyang 24 millimeter, which is a really, really lightweight and small lens that I've talked about before. It's really cheap. So it is also a really great starter lens if you want to try out the 24 millimeter focal length. Personally for me, I think that uh, the 24 millimeter focal length is the lowest that I like to use when I shoot street photography because I have a hard time myself handling the, the even wider focal lengths when it comes to street photography. But this is just my personal choice. So another great option, definitely for beginners as well, is the uh, Sony 50mm 1.8. This is the Nifty 50 that I think most of us started out with. And it is a really cheap one from Sony, but that does not make it a bad lens. The lens is uh, compact, it's lightweight, and it's very affordable, which is a really nice thing if you are going to use it for street photography. As the other lenses, it's a 1.8 lens, so it has the ability to let a lot of light in, and it also delivers some fine bokeh. And you can also use this for portrait photography as well if you'd like to. A downside for this lens, for me at least I think, is that it does not perform that well in video. These are just my experience, but it is definitely still usable if you want to use it for, for video as well. Having the focal length at 50mm also offers you a 
bit more reach than the other lenses that I've covered. So you have the ability to, to go a bit closer to, to subjects that you don't want to go right up in the face and, and capture. So this is uh, also something to consider with the uh, Nifty 50 lens. This is the Sony 85mm 1.8, a really, really fantastic lens from Sony. Definitely one of the best lenses for the money, I think. It's a fantastic portrait lens and yeah, it just takes fantastic photos. I really like this lens. It's definitely one of my favorite lenses from Sony. With the 85mm, you get the ability to, to go a little bit closer than you do with the 50mm. So you can capture like these uh, candid moments without interfering with the scene, which is also really nice. But still, I think that the 85 is a good distance that you still have the ability to back out if you want to capture a wider part of a scene and also you can use these uh, sort of uh, panorama stacking methods that I talk a lot about in my videos if you want to capture even more with a longer focal length like the uh, 85 millimeter. Like all of the lenses I've talked about, this is a 1.8 lens, so it has the ability to let in a lot of light and it delivers some buttery smooth, fantastic bokeh. I really think that this is a top lens, definitely for the money. You could, of course, if you have the money, consider buying the G Master version, but I really don't think that you get a lot extra for the money that you do pay for the G Master. So this is definitely a uh, lens that I would recommend and that I'm never going to operate, I think. So a thing that I don't use myself are zoom lenses, but I also think that I need to talk about the, those here. There are many great zoom lenses out there and I personally think that zoom lenses are better for video actually, because when you are shooting video, you might be in a situation where it's not that easy for you to go closer to us. Well, it's not that easy for you to go closer to a subject and then you have the capabilities of the zoom to, to really zoom and punch in really fast and, and get a scene in a close-up situation that you wouldn't be able to when you are just on your feet. But I think that for most situations in a street photography scenario, it is possible for you to move around and get closer or farther away uh, and then match your scene for, for for the lens that you are using if it's a prime lens. But that being said, of course, I understand that many people like zoom lenses and I'm not against zoom lenses in, in that way. I just don't use them that often myself. The only zoom lens that I own is the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter F4 which is a really nice lens, I think. I like this lens because it's just monstrous and it looks uh, really nice. And I do use this for street photography sometime, but it does not really live up to my standards of being lightweight and easy to carry. I think if I should recommend a lens, without having used it, and that being said, I would recommend the uh, Tamron 35 to 150 millimeter to to 2.8. I think this is a fantastic coverage of the focal lengths that you mostly use when you do street photography, starting with the 35 millimeter as I started this video and going all the way up to 135, giving you almost double as uh, much reach as the 85 millimeter. And still with the aperture of uh, 2 to 2.8, this is uh, really nice for a zoom lens. And I've heard a lot of great things about this uh, lens, but it is a really expensive expensive lens as well, almost cost 2000 euros or dollars. So yeah, it is quite an investment. Another lens you could consider if you like zoom lenses, of course, is a 24 to 70 millimeter. This is like the most standard of uh, focal lengths that this covers. And a lot of people start out with this uh, focal length. I have uh, owned a lens like this myself many years ago, and I must say I really never used it, but that is just my preference. I really like prime lenses the most. This is something you find out when you try these lenses out. A recommendation for you if you don't want to spend a lot of money on buying this and then lose a lot of money if you're going to sell it is to either borrow a lens from a friend or a relative or trying to lend a lens. You can uh, pay to, to use a lens for a day and then you can see if it is uh, something for you. So there you have it. These were my all favorite lenses and then I also share my wild cards when it comes to uh, zoom lenses if you're into zoom lenses. I hope you found this interesting and yeah, I definitely recommend these lenses. Like I've said, I own most of them and I've tried almost all of them apart from the Tamron lens. And if you uh, consider buying these and if you want to go check them out, just go down in the description where I have uh, links to all these uh, lenses. So let me know if you like this and let me know if I should make an APC version of this uh, video. And then there's not much more left to say than I really appreciate that you watch this video and that you have to take your time and look at the 
things that I create for you. If you liked it, then please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't, of course, consider subscribing. I will see you around in the future. Take care, guys and girls. Bye. Sink. You sinker. Sink, sink.